two nights ago it was so hot that most of us were sitting outside to catch what little breeze there might be. And tonight it's so cold that we're closing the windows and people are all bundled up. It's hard to find conditions that are just right in every way. The world seems to swing back and forth from one extreme to the next. And it's pretty much the same way with our minds. We can go through swings of extreme enthusiasm and extreme laziness. days when everything seems to be going perfectly fine. Sit down and meditate, and the mind is very obedient. And that much longer after that, then it goes totally wild, out of control. So you've got to learn how to bring it under control yourself, learn how to moderate it. Because if there's going to be any sense of just right, it has to come from the path, this practice we're doing. As a John Mon once said, it's normal that the mind, when it starts on the path, is going to go from one stream to extreme to the other. But you've got to learn from the extremes to see how you can bring things back to the middle. And a good place to learn about this is at the breath. The texts say that there are five factors that go into the first jhana. And that John Lee has a really useful obser observation about the five. There's directed thought, there's evaluation, there's singleness of preoccupation. There's pleasure and there's rapture. That's the list in the texts. And John Lee's observation is that the first three, directed thought, evaluation, and singleness of preoccupation, are the causes. Those are the factors you can do, whereas the other two factors are results. So you focus on trying to keep the mind with one object. You direct it, say, to the breath. And the really important factor in all of this is evaluation, learning how to gain a sense of what's just right for the body, what kind of breathing is just right for the mind. Experiment. If you breathed a little bit longer, what would the results be? Then if you tried long breathing for, breathing for a while, you might try even longer, or you might try shorter. The evaluation here involves two things. One, trying to figure out what changes you can make, and then two, learning how to evaluate them to see what's working well and what's not working well. And there's actually a third aspect as well, which is when things are going well, how do you make the most use of that sense of ease and sense of rapture that can come when things are going well? But to begin with, it's good to remember there are lots of ways that you can conceive the breath, which will give you different ideas of what the possibilities are. If you think of it only as air pumping in and out of the lungs. There's a limited range of possibilities. If you think of it more as breath energy, that widens the range, because the breath energy can come in and out in any spot of the body. And it can permeate every part of the body. And John Fuhrer once talked about the breath in the bones. Have you ever looked at the breath in your bones? There's also breath energy surrounding the body. It's like a cocoon. 
is that cocoon of energy in good shape? Can you sense it? Some people can, some people can't right off. But as you get more and more sensitive to the breath energy in the body, you realize it is there. And you can tell when there's a rip or a tear in the breath energy surrounding the body. And you can think of healing it. So that's the first part of evaluation, is thinking of the breath in different ways. You might think of the breath, and John Lee calls it the up-flowing breath, which is the breath that comes up from the base of the spine up through the head, goes out the top of the head. Or you can think of it coming from the soles of your feet out through the top of the head, supporting the body so you're not slouching down as you sit. Or you might find that the breath energy flowing up through the body is getting stuck in your head. Hakuin, the Zen monk, talks about Zen sickness. Basically, it was the breath energy getting stuck in his head. He had to visualize it was an egg broken on the top of his head and just running down, or a ball of butter. That's what it was. It was a ball of butter melting down from the top of his head and going down as a way of bringing the energy back down. That egg was probably the egg that they pretended to crack on your head when you were a kid. But for Aquin it was a ball of butter. Think of the breath energy coming in and out. The palms of your hands, the soles of your feet. If there's a tightness or a heaviness, say, in your chest, think of it flowing out your arms and out the palms of your hands. It's a tension in your hips. Think of it flowing out the soles of your feet. In other words, this part of evaluation has to do with your ingenuity and the different ways you conceive of the breath energy in the body and what you can do with it. Then the next step is actually learning how to read the results of what you've done. What really is good? Sometimes you can get stuck on very subtle breathing, which may seem very still, very relaxing, very calming, and you stick with it, sometimes for days on end. But what it can do, though, is it can drain the energy of the body. Maybe years ago. Yom Tam, one of John Fuang's students, an old woman who had been studying with him, came to visit the monastery. He was sitting in meditation, and he called out to her and said, Look, you've been stuck on cool breathing now for weeks. It's not good for you. Cool breathing here being the very, very subtle, very still, very relaxed. So sometimes it's good to breathe in a way that's relaxing, and other times you've got to find a way of breathing that's more energizing. You've got to learn how to read what your body needs. John Lee compares it to being a, a good parent. When your child cries, you know what the child needs. You learn how to read the cry, and you have different ways of dealing with a child, picking it up, walking around, giving it something to eat. putting in a swing. Whatever you sense is going to work. And the more familiar you are with your child, the more you can read the cries. In the same way with the breath. When things aren't going well in the body, you want to observe, well, why is it not going well? Exactly what kind of not going well is this? Too much energy, too little energy. Is the breath flowing up too much or is it flowing down too much? Is the breath energy kind of dead and lifeless, or is it too scattered? And then try to think of ways of bringing it back into balance. And then reading what you've got. Is it working? If it's not working, try something else. This also means, however, learning how to read 
how long you need to stick with something before you can get the results. Sometimes you can tell immediately, you try a certain way of breathing, and this is not right for the body. Other times it takes a while. Back when I had migraines, I found that really deep, forceful breathing could be very helpful. It didn't feel comfortable at first, but after a while you begin to notice it really was having a good effect on the body. So sometimes you can't tell right away what's going to work and what's not. But this is a, one of the reasons why we sit and meditate so long, is you've got time to experiment. And then when you sense that the results are going the way you want, that's the third aspect of evaluation which is how to make the most use of these good results. How to maintain them. Say there's a sense of ease and well-being in the middle of the chest. How do you maintain that ease and well-being? What way do you breathe? How do you adjust your breath so as to maintain that sense all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out? Then once you can do that, how do you let that spread to the different parts of the body? Where are the channels where it can spread? What kind of spreading forces things too much and spoils the whole effect? In other words, how much allowing is involved and how much actually opening things up? And consciously spreading do you need to do? These are questions you can only answer for yourself. No one else can answer them for you. But as you learn these three aspects of evaluation, using your ingenuity and thinking of different ways of working with the breath and working with the mind, i.e. focusing in different parts of the body, noticing how much pressure you need to exert in order to keep the focus there, how much pressure is too much, how much pressure is not enough. But when using your ingenuity to learning how to read the results of what you're doing, read the situation that you're starting out with, and learn how to read when you're getting good results and when you're not. And then three, when you do get good results, what to do with them, how to maximize them, so the mind can stay still and balanced for a long period of time, and it can stay clear, so you can get some of the other benefits of concentration, i.e. the discernment that can come when things are very clear in the mind strong foundation for mindfulness and alertness. It's a lot easier to keep the breath in mind throughout the day. When the breath feels really good, you can walk around and you just be filled with a sense of just that, fullness. But when you do that, you find it a lot easier to stay centered in the body and not really interested in going off anywhere else, because it feels so gratifying. So this factor of evaluation is the really important one in getting all the other factors of the first jhana together. Because you evaluate the breath, it gets more comfortable, the sensation of the breathing gets more interesting. It's a lot easier to keep your mind focused on the breath and to stay there, have the sense of singleness, which means both having one object in mind and then having that object or that perception fill the whole range of your awareness out throughout the body and even around the body, in that sort of cocoon of energy outside. And the sign that your evaluation is going well is that the sense of fullness in the body becomes more and more pronounced, the sense of ease, well-being, 
pleasure, simply in being here with the breath, being here in the body. Feeling all the different breath channels in the body connect so that everything in the body feels unified. All of this depends on how carefully you do this process of evaluation, how you bring your powers of observation to bear. There are some people who say that the factor of evaluation is simply kind of the wobbling of the mind because your concentration isn't solid enough. But that's not really the case. You need to do this evaluation to get the mind and its object snugly together so they're on good terms with each other. Then, as John Fuang would say, once things are just right, you reach the point where you realize you don't need to evaluate things anymore. It's just right coming in, just right going out, and you can't really improve it. His images of a large water jar like they have in Thailand, where they collect the water that comes off the roofs of houses. So you fill up the water jar, and it gets to the point where it's so full you can't really add anymore. If you try adding more water, it all just spills out. It can't get any more full than that. And that's the point where you can let the evaluation go. You can just become one with the breath. So the awareness fills the body, and the breath fills the body. And that sense of oneness can take you all the way to the through the dimension of con the infinitude of consciousness. But to get to that oneness, you've got to evaluate things to get everything fitting together. I once made the mistake one time of talking to. I was talking to somebody in Thailand, and they said it was like a dog lying down. I should have used a dog to make a comparison with the mind and concentration. But I thought it was a good image. The dog lies down, and whoops, there's a rock. So it gets up and it scratches away the rock. Then it lies down again. Whoops, there's a root. Okay, you scratch at the root. You scratch here, scratch there, and you finally get everything nice and smoothed out and comfortable. Then the mind can just really settle down and really be at one. It's a scratching around. That's the evaluation. So try to do as precise and observant a job as you can with this evaluation, and the results will just keep getting better and better. <laughs>